Hey everybody, video here for you today. We're going to go back to Egypt for a video. Now I have been working on a series for about the last six months called the top 10 most mysterious sites in Egypt. This is not one of them. I think we have the story here pretty well told, but this is a fascinating story. But let's go down to near Alexandria here and what was rediscovered here first in 1933 and then about 20 years ago off the coast here. And but you notice on Google Earth, there appears to be a grid system off the coast of Alexandria here. And I don't know how much you can trust Google Earth, but there you can kind of see it. And this is where Heraklion was discovered. But let's go over to a few websites and also will be uh, a few talks included in this video. Now this is Archaeology Magazine. I know other channels have covered this discovery, but I think there are important things to bring up. This is their featured article in November, December 2019 about the underwater ruins that were found here. Pretty fascinating and big questions need to be asked that relate to other ancient sites in Egypt. Some things that were discovered underwater here, jewelry, Byzantine coins, and one that features Heracles, and I believe he is in the form of Orion here, left foot striding, right arm raised, left arm out in front in the common form of the constellation of Orion. Heracles was a celestial hero in ancient myth also. But take a good look at the coin here on the right. Right arm raised, left arm out in front, left foot striding. That is the way the constellation of Orion was always depicted. Here's another website discovering the ancient city of Heraklion and many statues temple walls and other things were found here. Here is a large statue that was discovered underwater. Just off the coast of Alexandria sits the lost city of Heraklion. It covers the bottom of the sea about 10 meters underwater in Abbey Queer Bay. The ancient Egyptian city submerged underwater about 1200 years ago for reasons we have yet to discover. But for the last decade archaeologists have been studying this fascinating city. Why was it submerged? Well, I think we do have an answer, and that will be included in a talk later in the video. Heraklion is also known as Taunus, and it used to be a city of great wealth. It was home to the main station where all trade from Greece and other spots in the Mediterranean entered Egypt. Because of this, the city was a very important part of the time and played a large role in the trading industry. Many things have been recovered from the ruins of Heraklion. More than 64 buried ships and 700 anchors have been discovered along with gold coins and stones. Archaeologists have also discovered giant statues that are as tall as 16 feet tall and hundreds of smaller statues of the gods. Large stones inscribed in ancient Egyptian and ancient Greek are just some of the ancient items scientists have brought to the surface. One of the greatest discoveries is a huge temple to the god Amun Karab, which happened to be one of the most supreme gods of the Egyptians. Now here is a large red granite statue of the god Happy, H-A-P-Y, and that is very big and very well made. But this was really the first discovery of this god in such a colossal huge statue form, made of red granite, but a god of the Nile flooding and abundance and fertility. Also discovered underwater, this huge stella, Ptolemy the Eighth. 16 feet tall. You can kind of see a wing disc here maybe at the top. Some other things, but seawater really took a toll on this. Once again, 16 feet tall. Massive stella. And here is this huge fragmented stella found underwater here just off the coast of Alexandria. Here they're dragging it up from the seafloor. This is frankadio.org, and he's the one that led the underwater expedition. But the little bit they can make out on this stella, it just had to do with the concerns of the priests of Heraklion. But this one, the seawater, didn't affect too much, and this is pretty much intact. Probably made a different material than the one to Ptolemy the Ape. But certainly, this is a lot like one in the Egyptian museum, it says here, and it's erected to the city of Taunus. And here it is being pulled out of the water. This was ordered by Pharaoh Nectanebo around 378 BC. Here is a golden dish that was used throughout the Hellenistic world for drinking and pouring libations. Now here is a fairly eerie statue. They think this is Cleopatra II or third, and she's wearing the tunic of Isis here. 
Now here's an interactive map of the area. This is all now submerged beneath the sea, but here is the way they theorize it looked when the docks and the canals and the Temple of Amun was right here and other things. A lot of ship anchors and ships were found in this area. Now for the next eight or nine minutes, I'm going to play some clips from this almost 16 minute lecture. This is Mark Wilson, the rediscovery of Herakleon. It had some good information in it. Probably the best info of why this place sank beneath the sea. But when this is over, I'm going to come back and talk to you and ask a really, really important question. But here you go. Here's Mark Wilson. Um, I'll pop right in. In 1933, an intrepid British Royal Air Force pilot named Captain Cull spotted an undersea line lying underneath the waters a few kilometers off the coast of Egypt. Note that Egypt was at the time a British protectorate, quote unquote, uh, after World War I. So that's what he was doing flying around there at the time. The spot we are talking about is called Abukir Bay, about 30 kilometers east of Alexandria. A map. A map. <laughs> the line that he saw was probably not lime green, but this is an extremely public domain image. Uh, what he saw appeared to be a series of structures, a temple wall, as it later turned out, which had long ago slipped down into the bay. Well, you sure don't see that every day, evidence of an underwater civilization. And this was in 1933, long, long before Eric von Däniken and Chariots of the Gods, and this guy, <laughs> and the Bermuda Triangle craze. Those things were way off in 1933. So Captain Cull had no reason to doubt that when he saw a structure under the water, he was looking at a bit of human civilization, not a UFO base. So he passed on his report right away when he got back down on the ground. And almost immediately afterward, nothing whatsoever happened for 60 years. <laughs> Why was there no follow through on this? Well, I mean, things were complicated at the time. I mean, Italy was invading e Ethiopia next door. There was the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty of 1936, which limited British power in Egypt. And there was also a lot of invasive archaeology happening in Egypt at the time in the form of Harrison Ford fighting Nazis over the Ark of the Covenant. So it was a busy time. Lost Mediterranean civilizations, real ones or fictional ones, carry plenty of romance. But the one that I'm here to talk about tonight, the lost city of Heraklion slash Tonus, is... But to frame it as a port of call and a harbor complex, standing on the islands and sandbars of a wetland, think very vaguely of Treasure Island and Angel Island, plus Alcatraz and the Dumbarton Bridge and some land filly spans of the Embarcadero Piers. For hundreds of years, this harbor complex at the mouth of the Nile uh, was the public face of Egyptian commerce with the rest of the known world. 300 years before Alexandria was founded, this was the flag Egypt hung out to the Mediterranean. So, smash cut to this amazing guy. After that 60-year lull following 1933, enter Frank Gadido. Employed internationally as a government mathematician slash economist until his early 40s, he decided to jump into a second career in undersea archaeology. It's a very easy transition to make career-wise. I am always getting the impression from Godito of one part Jacques Cousteau, one part Buckminster Fuller, one part Tony Robbins. He's... He's a big self-promoter, but in a way hard not to admire. So let's run down what this whole thing's about archaeologically. The Nile, flowing north, of course, spreads into its famous delta in the final approach to the Mediterranean. Overlaying here, I will show where in ancient times the main splits of the river progressed through the delta. Now in 331 BCE, Alexander the Great founded his famous coastal city of Alexandria at the extreme west of the delta. But at that time, there was already a thriving port right next door on the Canopic branch of the Nile at Abu, Kirbe, at Abu Kir Bay, 30 kilometers east of Alexandria. The city was Heraklion, which had been doing well for itself for at least 300 years. And I brought my own cat toy. Um, I don't even know why I need to do this, because I already put a red box there. But um, I've got to use 
the thing since I brought it. Um, <laughs> to zoom in on that spot, we'll see here uh, in, uh, in this picture <laughs> the results from all of the uh, bay seafloor scanning that was done. And uh, it shows in tan colors where uh, Gadito showed that solid or at least mainly above sea level land used to be. And the next box I'll zoom in onto is the one that contains this schematic diagram of what the Heraklion city complex used to look like. So uh, of important note to this group tonight is that where you see the blue peppering, um, like all of now, all of that stuff, those are where anchors were found. And where you have anchors, you have uh, some of which were also found in full shippy form, too, not just the anchor. Uh, these are the larger blue diamonds that you see splashed around. So a good 66 ships have been turned up from around this site. Most of them uh, were scuttled deliberately back in the day. This is a much older map of the bay before any of this work had been done to excavate, um, and it shows where scholars expected to find Heraklion uh, back on land. And this is probably why I really brought the pointer. They thought it would be there, and that it would be two towns called Heraklion and Tonus, um, not out in the middle of the sea, but on land, of course, uh, which they thought were, uh, were two cities sort of that lived cheek by jowl in the same sense as Minneapolis and St. Paul, or Buddha and Pesht, twin cities. Uh, but we now know that Heraklion and Tonus were just the same place, uh, whether under Egyptian versus Greek naming. So nobody could seem to find this place, though. Uh, but we knew Heraklion should be someplace, because it was mentioned a good three, four uh, times in important ancient sources. First of those is the father of history and chatty Cathy, <laughs> Mr. Herodotus, who never minded passing on false oddities if they interested him, and God bless him for that. So here he is in a statue, and here he is as a character in Assassin's Creed. Um, so when you hear something from Herodotus, you verify it. But he said there was a city on the canopic outlet of the Nile where not only did the demigod Heracles himself once alight, giving the city its name, and here's Heracles for you in super cool mode, um, showing you how to dress when you need to fight a lion. <laughs> Herodotus tells us that this city, named after Heracles, figures in the Trojan War a little bit. Uh, when Paris made off with Helen of Troy, who was really from Sparta, just ran to Troy, never mind that. Uh, these lovers on the lamb were blown by a storm into Heraklion, where they were stuck for a night. They made a sacrifice in the temple of Heracles before going on to Asia Minor to start the Iliad. So that's what Herodotus said. But the takeaway is that there is a port city on the Nile named after and with a temple to Heracles. Let me point out that, boom, the temple of Heracles is that, you know, big thing in the middle there. I can never punch the right button. So... To clean up real quickly, there were other ancient sources about the city. These would include Strabo, whose geography, I will tell you, is ungodly long. <laughs> and Diodorus Siculus, whose Bibliotheca Historica was also less interesting than Herodotus. The big question is, what the hell happened? We have this buzzing metropolis of ports, temples, custom houses, which conducted the business of the Nile Valley with the world for a thousand years, vanished. It did lose some prominence over time to Alexandria, but the real story is in a phrase that will have a chilling ring to Bay Area ears, and that is soil liquefaction. <laughs> See, if you have water-bearing soils, or if you have landfill or slippy clay, and you set a very heavy structure on it, um, <laughs> then it only takes so much tectonically to send the thing underwater. There is some evidence that stragglers were on a couple of islands in Heraklion at the time Islam came to Egypt in the 600s CE. But it was around then that the city's name passed out of history and all memory of its location went dark. People forgot where it had been. No word of a specific catastrophe 
And this is more a slow tectonic story than a climate change story, but it was mysteriously forgotten, at least until 1933 when Captain Cull saw it, and then it was forgotten again until 96 when Gaudio and his team began to discover the city anew. So let us raise our glasses to him, uh, to their discovering spirit and his team, and to the hope that someday someone will also dredge up from the bottom of the sea all these interesting spots where we live and work today. But I will leave the full link to this Creative Commons video. I appreciate it when videos are made shareable. And this was just a fun lecture to listen to. It was not boring. I enjoyed it. But now I have a very, very big question to ask. Here is looking down on the ship. You can see the people here. These statues are over five meters high, and so is Stella here. But what was here before Heraklion? A lot of the important cities in Egypt are built on much older sites. Now here is just about a one minute clip from a Graham Hancock lecture. I will leave the full video link below. But Mr. Hancock asked some very important questions. Now these ruins were found in about 30 feet of water. Now what was found in about 110 feet of water right near this site? Well, I think there's some important questions to be thought about here. What was found here? Does this come from a totally different time period? Thousands of years before. Well, here's Mr. Hancock, a one minute clip. The audio is not the greatest, but you can clearly see what was found in 110 feet of water, and this just opens up a whole bunch of questions. All the important sites in Egypt are built on much older sites. Is this one of them? Well, let's just take a look and listen. The argument at the time amongst Egyptologists was the Sphinx can't possibly be 12,000 years old. There's no other structures, no other large monuments anywhere in the world which are 12,000 years old. Why should we consider that the Sphinx might be 12,000 years old? This is before civilization began. We all know that big monuments belong to the period of established civilized history, not to the period of prehistory, 12,000 years ago. Santa and I tried to draw their attention to some structures that lie off the coast of Alexandria. Uh, these structures are not old. The submerged temple of Cleopatra, which we've also dived on, uh, is not ancient. It was submerged as a result of land subsidence uh, off the north coast of Alexandria. But, and it's not deep. But if you go out into really deep water, and we went with an Egyptian technical diver who used to work with the Egyptian Navy called Ashraf Bashan. And he wrote to me and he said, I have found a site in 110 feet of water off the coast of Alexandria, about five kilometers out. It looks man-made to me. Will you come and dive it with us? Well, we did go and dive with him. It took us a more than a week to relocate the site. It was extremely difficult to relocate, but lo and behold, there are these huge megalithic blocks on the seabed, and they have been underwater, we know for sure from the geology, for more than 12,000 years. Uh, but that wasn't paid attention to either. Um, but all the important sites in Egypt seem to be built on the foundations of a much more ancient culture. Is the story the same here at Heraklion? Here is a close-up of the blocks. They are huge, and they kind of echo what is on the foundation of Giza. That is my video on Heraklion, or Tonus, rediscovered here in 1933, and then later work about 20 years ago really brought this site to light. Hope you enjoyed it, and you all have a very nice day.